this is our 1879 Jimson beam engine which came from a little pumping station at Hopworth in Staffordshire and pumped all the water for Tamworth. So we're going to start her now. We have to get her around into the starting position. So Rachel's is going to bar the flower wheel around with the barring lever just to get her into the start position. Fast top dead center, so we'll put the steam on and hopefully away she goes. When she was in service, this would have been her working speed, quite slow, just pumping water day in, day out, six months without stopping. It was built in 1878, so it's quite an old engine. The steam side is here, this is the steam cylinder. So the steam is used in there, and then it exhausts into a condenser, which creates a bit of vacuum. So if you look on the gauges behind me, you can see this is the steam pressure, and this is the vacuum that's been created by the cold water coming into the exhaust pipe. It makes running a beam engine quite tricky because it has no load on it, so it either tends to accelerate or stall. So I'm having to just control the vacuum with this little piece of wire in my right hand just to stop the engine over running. As you can imagine, a beam weighing 10 tons, which changes direction in a second, is a huge amount of lateral force to the to the engine. When you think it's only standing on two cast iron columns, plus the, st the struts that we put at each end, um, you need to run them really carefully. The water side of this engine was, the pumps were connected to that yoke system, just opposite the flywheel, and it had pitch pine shaft sections, nine inch square, about 20 foot long, all bolted together, going down 400 feet to the bottom of the well. And in the bottom of the well, you have a simple flat valve, which just opens and closes, so the water sort of comes up in, in stages, and then just tips into the reservoir. I think what's always rather nice about these Victorian engines is that they were functional, but they still made them to look artistic, beautiful, whatever you like to call it. And the other thing that's really nice about steam engines is of course that they're, although they're large pieces of machinery, they're really quite quiet. And probably the noisiest thing on this engine is the click of the rev counter as it goes round each time, that little tick. So you can imagine in 1870 being an engine driver for a beam engine was actually a very nice job. You came to work in the morning into a lovely warm engine house, a beautiful, beautiful piece of machinery to look after, and that lovely smell of steam oil and coal smoke. But just before we stop it, we might just show you one other very significant feature of beam engines. If you look at the end of the beam, you've got to connect that somehow to the piston which is driving it. The piston rod travels up and down in a straight line, but the end of the beam, of course, is traveling in a circle. So if you imagine if you connect something traveling in a circle to something traveling in a straight line, the first time you put steam on it, it would bend the piston rod. James Watt's second great invention was the invention of parallel motion. And he suddenly realized that if you put a parallelogram on the end of a beam traveling in a circle, over about 30 degrees of arc, the point on the end of the parallelogram just about stays in a straight line. So overnight, he doubled the power of steam engines because you can now have a power stroke up as well as down. Okay, so we'll bring this engine slowly to a stop. So we'll turn the steam off. And using the vacuum breaker, we'll see if we can just get it to stop. Missed it. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay. Well, it's going to be a little bit of barring next time we start it, but that's why we don't need a gym here. We just uh, come and bar a beam engine instead. Very good. Very good. Thank you.